We had a really good band practice tonight. I feel really good about that. That is what I want to talk about. Hi, everybody. This is Scott Homan, director of Witness Underground. And I am Ryan Sutter, the proprietor of Nuclear Gopher Productions. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. We have a little bit of an agenda. We have a bunch of really exciting news about a film festival that's coming up. Two film festivals, one that starts next week, one that's next month. And a live performance we're going to talk about, band practice that's been going on for that in preparation for that. We're going to be doing a, a video shoot at that festival. So we're going to get into all of that and what you can do to be a part of that. Um, in short, I made Witness Underground, a feature documentary as a director, but I did a lot of the other parts of it as well. And I also, before that, and continued through till, to now, till now, I've made XGW Coming Out, which is a, a series, which a series, a doc series, that interviews other XGW's witnesses all over the world, especially this country, but Germany, Vietnam, and a couple other, Mexico. Um, and it just gives a little nuanced backstory to what it's like to go for, through an exit and what people are up to now that they've left this religion, the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm here because uh, I am one of the f featured subjects in the Witness Underground documentary. Uh, the reason I am one of the featured subjects is because I'm a musician and artist and also the co-founder of uh, a Jehovah's Witness independent record label back in the 90s. And called Nuclear Gopher, which is uh, the source of much of what is covered in the documentary. Um, and really excited to be able to um, not just have this documentary there, but also to be bringing Nuclear Gopher back into the world and uh, bringing music out again and uh, getting ready to perform some of this stuff for the first time in many, many years uh, at a showing of this awesome movie. So um, very cool. I'm pretty excited. I play in a band called Awkward Bodies, and I am here in the Nuclear Gopher uh, recording studio, um, or at least the current iteration of it. Sound Unseen sent out their announcement today. Oh, sick. Awesome. That's great news because... I was hoping maybe you didn't already know that, and you didn't, so that's I awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... It's now, we can now talk about it. It's oh, my God. Problem. That means we can spread it everywhere. Yeah, it's I time. literally just posted it on Facebook while I was waiting for you to send me the Zoom link. Like, I just, wow. just posted it. And I said, yeah. you oh know, I've been saying the Witness Underground <laughs> was going to be playing somewhere in the Twin Cities, but I couldn't say where. Now I can. Mark your calendars. Very special event. And I there's a whole, uh, like, <laughs> huge thing about it. Amazing. Yeah, that's the best news. Now I have to edit this entire show to include this conversation because you're yep, never going to so. get this reaction from me again. We did <laughs> it's this. finally out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, we just caught it on live camera. <laughs> you officially being able to say or hearing for the first time that Sound mm. Unseen is showing Witness <sighs> Under on November 12th. Yes, yeah, so everybody come out. You can come and actually see the film, watch everyone play, and be in our next movie. Yeah, it's going to be the most amazing, incredible event. I am so incredibly stoked. It's like not even funny. Before anyone checks out, the festival is coming, is called Sound Unseen. It's a music and film festival out of Minneapolis. Months ago, well, I'm not supposed to say that. They announced today <laughs> that, we, that we are in the bill for showing uh, our film at that festival, but also they're gonna announce our live, all the musicians from in the film are, have been asked to play live. And that has been something we've been planning for quite a while, but now we can talk about it. And it's going to be playing at Hook and Ladder November 12th on Friday night. Check your calendar, mark it for that. Show up if you can, if you're locally living locally. And if you wanna travel, get in touch because we're gonna be throwing down for this. A lot of people are coming out from all over the region. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Chicago. And um, we'd obviously love to have you there. Probably there's going to be limited ticket sales, but we're really excited about Sun Unseen. It's easily the dream come true for the fest for the film festival run. Couldn't have asked for a cooler festival or a cooler uh, way to do this, to show the film in Minneapolis. I actually, I, I, I'm looking at the soundunseen.com website right now. Do you want to hear what they say? Yeah, yeah. All right. Midwest premiere. Witness Underground, director Scott Homan. 
Witness Underground is a feature documentary that reveals the insular DIY artist community that emerged within the high controlled Jehovah's Witness religion in Minneapolis. Music, fame, and success are typically forbidden in the religion, which instructs its members to beware of independent thinking. The artists at the heart of the music scene have their faith tested in deeply personal ways. They battle for positive mental health and push the boundaries of the religion's norms, where leaving often means being banned from interacting with your entire family and social circle for life. Although severely restricted, they create the record label Nuclear Gopher and produce over 30 albums of earnest and personal music that spans singer, songwriter, riot girl, psychedelic rock, pop, EDM, shoegaze, and post-rock. Carefully curated songs and live performances punctuate their stories of friendship, deep loss, and personal growth. And then they also point out that... Um, on November 12th, High TV, Ryan Sutter, and special guests from Witness Underground will be featured. Ooh, special guests. Who's special it gonna be? Guests. We don't know yet. <laughs> we really don't I, know yet. <laughs> I actually do know a little bit. Oh, do you? I might okay. know a couple of things you don't know yet. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, well, that read really well. Let's get into what yeah. we don't know, what I don't know. Um, I love that. I I and a couple other people wrote that. So they asked for us to give our synopsis. And I've actually rewritten it since a week ago when I sent that to them. Um, but, you know, that's an endless process of editing. Um, but what do you think of that? I liked it. I mean, I think it um, it reads well. I think it's uh, it sets the hook, you know. Um, hopefully there's going to be some people interested. I mean, if you're not familiar with Sound Unseen out there in the world, uh, Sound Unseen, this is the 22nd uh, year. It is one of the um, most, uh, it is, uh, according to uh, Movie Maker Magazine, it has been named one of the 25 coolest film festivals in the world. Um, That's huge, it, actually. Movie Maker is like the standard that film festivals are judged on. Everyone refers to them for their few lists that they do every year. Yeah, this is a really cool festival. I mean, we've been in a couple other festivals so far, but this is the one where I'm like, wow, because this is all about music and documentary and it doesn't get better than that i mean we've got we're going to sh be sharing this festival with the film about guar so i'm happy um, <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> I love <Guar. laughs> and also this has a, an austin texas um affiliation yeah. as well uh it's not a festival that takes place purely in minneapolis it will also be showing in um in in austin i don't know if witness underground shows in both places do you? I well they've been asking and well, mentioning that they would like to do a virtual component. Okay. And they're going to do an in-person com um, component in Minneapolis. And I've learned in the last couple of days that they actually didn't just book Hook and Ladder Bar or the it's a theater, I think, Hook and Ladder mm -hmm. Theater. They booked um, many locations in oh. that, that area, or at least more than more than one, at least okay. two locations to show films and other also have live performances. So I don't know that we're the only live performance. I would love to see other other music. Um, it's, I think yeah, it's the only could. one that night. Um, but yeah. but do you know if they're showing the film at the Austin? Oh, Austin time? is Austin will be virtual, so oh. it'll be like a eventive page. Most of the film festivals now are using eventive. It's like a streaming okay. service mm -hmm. that is secure. So you, it's a paywall for streaming on Vimeo, essentially. Sure. But you give them ten bucks, and then you can watch the film. Likely, it'll be somewhere around ten dollars if it's virtual. So if somebody is in Austin or or Texas, able, probably or Texas, it's probably going to be geoblock to Texas. Yeah. They'll be able to see it. But the cool thing would be to show up and because yeah. we're going to make a movie there, too. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I have a long list of things to talk about, and I, I guess know. we jumped right into it. And sound is seen as the first thing. So let's just go for it. The yeah, this is a big deal. This is like yeah. the big news. And it just broke today. So it's like, yeah, super let's just hit it. yeah. Um, so. Sound Unseen invited the band to play. And our thought was, well, this is a really special experience that we didn't really expect at all. And my initial, my initial idea was like, well, we should, we should capture it somehow. And we've been talking about that through the whole thing casually as, as we're preparing for this event. But like, what are we going to do with that footage? And I got the idea to like change the last scene of the film and maybe capture a couple other moments that could like change the last, like the, the finale of the film is going to be, is this big thing. It's, it's already sort of like a, a culmination in the story, but this being having you guys on stage looking like rock gods, I thought would be like a cool, cooler, power, more powerful end. 
And I'm sure it could be. And we might do that. But then we got in our heads that we should make another movie using all this live music as a backbone, plus some new interviews. And that is being captured. The, the core is going to be captured. So we got another director, Dan Hutting, on board to help direct this with a seven-person camera crew to shoot your band. What's mm -hmm. the name of your band? Do you know how you're going to perform? Um, we are going as Awkward Bodies because that's our mm -hmm. band. But um, so, yeah, I, 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 how we're going to get built, I've already seen it listed as um, Ryan Sutter with Awkward Bodies. I've seen it as Awkward Bodies and I've seen it as Ryan Sutter, all of which is accurate because uh, we're not playing the usual Awkward Body songs. But it's, is it the full band? Yep. Same members? Yep. Uh, me, um, Mason, Jesse, and Eric will... We're gonna do our best we're learning um we're learning a bunch of my old songs and some of my newer stuff and uh we're putting together a show it's gonna be good there's a lot of there's gonna be other surprises i just learned one myself tonight so all right let's let's bring it out what do you got okay well you knew high tv was gonna play yeah I, it turns out puff puff is also getting back together again to play wow that's so, amazing okay yeah there yeah. was there was a we were worrying about well, both members, I think, right, weren't around uh -huh. or don't even live in the state or something, or weren't. one was, of them is out of town. Yeah, it was, uh, and we're we've we've started to hear about people who are planning to fly in for this. They didn't even know the event, and they're still already buying plane tickets. So <laughs> it's, it's gonna be pretty cool. I didn't even get yeah, my hotel yet. <laughs> I learned today about Puff Puff uh, uh, getting together to play for this. So, so that's three, and that's not all that's gonna happen, but. Um, that's cool. So if you like Puff Puff, which I think you do. I do. Yeah. How would you describe Puff Puff? Puff Puff? Um, kind of, uh, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of the Twee Pop thing, kind of like Chloe, but a little more jangly and dreamy. A little bit more adult as well. Yes. It has, yes. there's a couple, is it Serene? I think is one of the songs I really liked. Something with an S. Um, it's like almost like a, a dark ballad, but so powerful and just heavy vocals. It's yeah, Cindy, it really Cindy Ivy from High TV. Yeah. It really highlights Ivy's, uh, Ivy's vocals there. Really yeah. Something it reminds me of the nineties. It reminds me sort of like the breeders vibe going on. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah there was exciting. a, That's there were two puff puff discs that were made and i think you can still get them online yeah you can get one of them on Bandcamp for sure yeah I was, I was flying back from new york where okay so we have a festival history now with this film with witness underground ryan and i went out to new york city for a festival in may and on the way back from that uh ryan duvall and i were at the airport and then I was just listening to Puff Puff on repeat for like three straight hours. <laughs> his flight was out earlier than mine. And I totally like re fell in love with them and started reaching out to Cindy about like what songs she might play back. That's in May, end of May. Well, you get your, you get your chance. Uh, if you were not, I've never um, seen them. Yeah, yeah. If you were not here for like the three gigs they managed to play in 2011 or whenever that <laughs> happened, you missed your Puff Puff chance. This is your chance. Cool. Uh, they're going to be playing again. So that's uh, uh, it. I think we're going to have three very healthy sets of music. Um, it's going to be a pretty it's going to be a pretty crazy night. I mean, it's going to be pretty cool. We're we're really excited because what we're each, what we're the way we're doing this right now is we've got each individual act is sort of putting together their sets where we're, we're working our butts off practicing and learning songs and stuff. And then um, what we're talking about doing is essentially once everybody kind of has their core thing together, which will probably be in the next week or two, then we're going to set up a, um, we're going to set up a, a, basically a planning session to tr put it all together as one show, right? Like figure out, transitioning mm -hmm. from the one band to the other we're going to have we're going to do some special things we're you know there's other logistics like just sharing of instruments and members and stuff but we're gonna um it's gonna be it's gonna be unique it's not just gonna be you know um a couple of us getting up and 
trying to remember a couple of tunes on the guitar or something. It's we're going to do some, we're going to try to make a show out of it um, and make it, make it worthy of the event. Amazing. You got to yeah. take some post-it notes with like the drawing of each stick person and then um, the, the, the emotion of the song and like lay them out on the table and mastermind <laughs> them, and do a, the best mixtape ever. <laughs> it's going to be kind of a live mixtape and we're going to be playing some um, like, some songs that have never ever been played live before so we're having to figure that out it's very exciting yeah how, how's that coming with your music uh it's great actually i mean i love playing with with um the awkward bodies guys they're like i've been with this band now for what three years something like that um we played a lot of shows and we've done some recordings and so we play together really well and so um it's going very well i i feel like we're gonna we're gonna have a blast and we'll we'll be ready for our close-up mr demille you know it's just we will yeah cool and it's good i'm, I'm super i feel excited. like good i feel good about it i was super nervous at first i'm not gonna lie i was totally i was shitting yeah. my pants about it <laughs> what four months ago <laughs> yeah it was yeah. like it was like is this is this actually going to happen it's and so much effort to bring it all together right like all the bands the whole festival is bringing their effort. Yeah. And it's a lot of work to even want to. How do you? Like, uh, what I mean is like going, okay, I have to work up the energy to want to get everybody together and do the show. And then, and a lot of people are sort of, well, let's be honest, because of the subject matter of the movie, there's some nerves about oh. how the whole thing's going to wind up being received right there's going to yeah. be a huge ton of really supportive people who are going to be amazing and make our lives amazing that night there's probably going to be some people who are not going to think this is a good thing can and, you um let's let's say you, i totally understand where you're coming from but most people that are going to watch this might not yeah okay can, can you fair. spell it out like what is the tension in minneapolis and why is yeah. there tension uh why is there tension <laughs> in three minutes or less <laughs> yeah no the uh the tension boils down to the fact that um jehovah's witnesses don't have an exit path to leave the religion without um without taking on uh the uh being shunned for pretty much the rest of their lives and it is not allowed within that community for people to um, criticize or in any way negatively depict that religious community. And we try really hard in the movie not to just be critical of them. And, and it is a very positive depiction from my perspective of a lot of love and a lot of community and a lot of art and music. But that's not how uh, many current witnesses are going to see it. A lot of current witnesses are going to just, they're, they're not even going to watch the movie. They're just going to assume that if there is a movie about this, it must be incredibly negative. It must be satanic. And some of these people are our family members and our friends, and we are in our backyard here, right? Like this all happened here. So here we are. Or in Minneapolis, people are gonna, people who did not know this movie was even made, people who did not know this movie showed in New York earlier this year, they're gonna know. And I'm hopeful. I really, really, really would love to see a world in which they come and they they see it and they at least develop some empathy or some uh, some compassion for the people in the movie and the stories in the movie. And if, and, and hopefully, I mean, they would also enjoy just being together, making music with us again, but I just don't, I know that that's not going to be a universal sentiment, right? Yeah. It just isn't. So that's, that's why. It'll definitely catch some people by surprise. Oh yeah. And like all the emotions that we went through putting this together and that you've gone through having like over the last three years from conception to doing an interview to watching the rough edits to finally a movie and now it's out people are yeah. seeing it like there's a lot of lot we've gone through like it's part of our lives and our story 
but these people will be the very first time they experience it as a full complete polished movie Mm -hmm. which is going to be so interesting um it can make a whole movie emotional night this is going to be a heavy night yeah interesting yeah i didn't actually think about that i'm so excited about it but there's a (laughs) lot going on under the surface for everyone involved there is there is and there's a lot of feelings uh even among us while we're working on this show. Like, I mean, it's, ne- I play a lot of shows in my life. Never have I ever done anything with this much sort of subtext and drama <laughs> before yeah. we even get on stage or do anything, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause this is a big, this is a big thing. Yeah. There's a, there's a documentary that just came out by, uh, Aaron Kaufman, I think, is the director. Yeah. It's called Crusaders. And it's the kind of classic educational and also emotionally impactful documentary about exposing the Jehovah's Witnesses for basically their crimes against humanity mm-hmm. in a bunch of ways. And it brings in lots of new perspectives that usually aren't shown. It's really nuanced. And he's this director works in Hollywood. He's done a bunch of movies. And he decided as an extra witness that it's time for him to make something. But that just came out and that, that one just like straight to straight on the like nail on the, I don't know the expression nail on the head. <laughs> uh, anyway, just like straight to the point, like child sexual abuse is a problem. Shunning is a problem. And here's an example of how it destroys families. And then here's this person who's this granddaughter talking to her grandmother and like watch how she does this culty thing at the door and then slams the door on her own granddaughter's face. And, and it's like, well, here's a, here's a gay person who felt like they had to leave because whatever. You know, like there's so many issues that this religion is just so, so just bad at and bad for society and humanity in general. And that would, that's what that, that movie does. And I feel like if that was the movie we made and it was getting headlines, there would be reason for people to be upset. But we didn't make a movie like that at all. We made a movie that's about mm-hmm. people struggling with identity and struggling with their faith and and then going through a series of losses but then coming out the other side and being a through line of that being the music scene and the witnesses how that all changed and then what the music life is like for all these artists your life especially and yes there are people mentioned that were great friends and they're only shown in a positive light throughout and they're only talked about in a positive light throughout and it's like it was very important to me and I think to you as well to make it a celebration of that time. Yeah. And I feel like we really did very that. Much. So I do too. Any, anyone who has a issue, I feel like it would be, it's not because we're attacking their faith or their identity. We're just talking about a thing that really happened in a way that someone was really, people were really affected. And, re- and it's just, there's no arguing that that happened or didn't happen. Like that is just what happened. And we're not even pointing a very strict lens at the religion. It's just like, this is the culture. These are some shitty things, but this, like we have a new life now. And this is, this is what, what, this is what's great about our life and our, we, we yeah, I don't know. I yeah. Don't. And, and I, I, I completely believe that this message of this movie is underrepresented in the world and is a message that needs to be represented because it's not that it's not that um, child sexual abuse or people dying from lack of you know, un- inability to get blood transfusions or families or things being destroyed through all of those are very important issues. They are all worthy of attention. And um, but what, you know, in the world in which everything is about that type of of criticism i think there is a missing piece which is um telling people who um feel like is you know like like i did and like some of the rest of us did that like we were the weird ones we were the problems because we didn't go along with all of it and 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 that we are being shunned or treated badly by people and we need it's important to tell people in that position, people who either are currently in, but who don't feel it and who really um, are struggling 
or for people who have left and they're wondering, what can I do with my life now that this has happened to my life? I think it's important to tell the story that shows that and shows from life, real, real world, real facts that A, you're not alone. B, other people have been through some of this and C, you can come out the other side of it. And that, um, you know, for us, music and art were the tools. And that's really super important. Um, I'm hoping people are still using those tools. Kids today who are witnesses or teenagers or whatever are trying to get by or dealing with this, these feelings and these, these thoughts and, and, and this lifestyle. But to me, in some ways, that, um, that empathy angle and that sort of humanizing of people who are witnesses, that it's not all just about uh, teachings, it's not all just about theology, it's not all just about um, uh, the culture, it's also about individual human beings, like who didn't choose to be born into this thing, who then had to square the worldview they've been they've been taught with what they actually find out is true and and trying to also hold on to the relationships to the people they care about i think telling that is much harder than saying here are all the statistics about the bad things or here's a person talking about their terrible experience that they had like those stories are um, pretty straightforward pretty easy to illustrate but to try to illustrate something like using um, creative thinking and creativity and building a community as a way to both stay within the organization for a time and then also how that ultimately sort of helped contribute to more open minds, which ultimately led to people leaving like myself. That's a harder story to tell. It's no wonder it took as long as it did for you to tell it. And I think it's a really important story to tell. I don't think there's a lot of um, things that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of XGW stuff. There's a lot of people getting on and talking headsing their way through picking apart something that the Watchtower Society did. That's pretty straightforward. It's like not too hard to go find an XJW or an, I'm sorry, a JW.net video and be like, you know, here's the stupid. Um, <laughs> it's a lot harder to say like, here, let's put a heart and a face and a soul to the people who did yeah. this and then yeah. and then and 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 uh and you did and so i i think that's why the movie works i think that's why it has more appeal than if it were a screed about a particular like set of cult things mm -hmm. i don't think it would work and in a way i think in some ways that makes this movie maybe more dangerous it might actually affect people's hearts rather than just more facts. It's like, they're like, we're yeah. right. No, we're right. And they're just fighting each other. You know what just hit me? The way to say this, we're not asking them to hate their religion. We're asking them to love the people that have left it. Yeah. That is right. a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to hate your faith. I don't need you to change your faith. I just need you to accept me. Right. Um, that's a different message. And I think a lot of, a lot of the stuff is uh, that's out there is like, here's why the Jehovah's witnesses are bad and you should leave. Again, I'm not knocking that that stuff exists. I think it's important, but this movie ain't that. And if yeah. people come to see this movie and that's what they think it is, they misread it pretty bad. Mm -hmm. That was a, a beautiful, wonderful description of everything we've tried so hard to put together with this film. And I appreciate you bringing that up because I'm, I find myself, I'm wrapped up at this point with the movie and like learning how the business works and like having fun celebrating, getting festivals and like going out and meeting filmmakers and like the rock and roll aspect of it. And then like, mm -hmm. we, it is going to be a rock and roll film, <laughs> the rock concert. I know it's so and, cool. And I'm so excited and like wrapped up and like planning the shoot. And like, I love, I get so excited to like get involved and like make something happen and then be there with a the camera and then like getting to see you guys all play. I've never seen any of you play ever. I never even saw high TV and I'm like their hugest fanboy. I made a fucking movie celebrating that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working with Eric and Cindy since like 2014 with videos. Um, I've never seen them live. So like part of me is still excited to shoot it. Also would love to um, not shoot it and just be there like to mm -hmm. enjoy it. But 
the real the real motivation behind it all and the real point of the whole movie is not any of those things that's just all the fun like that's the set and mm-hmm. setting for the the real story that's told and the point of the story is to humanize jehovah's witnesses because everyone in the world us included you and i included mm-hmm. sees i mean everyone in the world not us sees the jehovah's witnesses us included as some strange weirdos when we were witnesses it was like oh ryan's cool but he's also in this creepy religion that's so weird like that's he's quirky as hell and scott too you know and and like that like being an other my entire childhood although was interesting was not ideal it has it has its downsides um and then leaving it's like you can never shake that other like oh now he's not only was he part of a cult, now he's some weird, broken human who left a cult who can't stop like dealing, can't get, can't get over it or whatever. It's yeah. like everyone's with you know, that's what they whisper behind. They're like, oh, Scott. Oh, yeah. The ex Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that's yeah. like the conversation that happens. And you're like, that is not how I want everybody <laughs> in the world to think of me. Right. You know, like, yeah, that, that, motiv- like, that, yeah, uh, that motivated me to like dealing with that on the inside and then leaving and being like, oh, I'm so free and like so much more comfortable being in my own skin and like being myself and then still having that weird other thing happening like Mm -hmm. oh you're this thing and i'm like what do you think that thing is then they describe what they think being a Jehovah's Witness or leaving a religion like that would be like and they're wrong like they have no idea because like nobody has any real context for that experience and like i'm like man i am so so tired of being misunderstood that i want to just set the record straight for everybody and mm-hmm. like filming with you guys isn't exactly my story, but it's so much fucking closer, way closer <laughs> than anything that exists. And um, I'm so happy that like, I just knew that I could tell the drama of my story much better with your weird short films from in the religion and your music tying the emotional arcs together. And also your stories are like as dramatic as mine, but even deeper on a number mm-hmm. of, in a number of ways. And plus, like, I, you know, telling my story, it's like the most cliche thing to do is like, I have a story to tell. I want to tell. I want to make a movie about me. Like so many people do that. And I was so happy that like you guys are all down to to tell your story and like be emotive on camera and yeah, be real. Because I think I feel kind of like um, I was waiting for you. I wanted to tell my story, but I didn't want to tell it. You wanted to tell your story, but you didn't want to tell it. So it worked out perfect that you told my story. Yeah, it's good. It's a good combo. Yeah, chocolate, peanut butter. <laughs> They're t- two great tastes that taste great together. What's interesting, I think, too, is like if someone, let's say this is the first time they ever meet you and I through this video. We have developed a relationship that stems, it starts basically one and a half years ago during like the first, I, yeah. like we met each other, but like we didn't start hanging out. Like there was like, we filmed the interview, and we filmed the footage. And that was like three days of our lives. Then we never really saw each other again. Yeah, then, you were just that dude in Denver who, yeah. you know, got me drunk and took advantage of me. <laughs> <laughs> got him to tell all of his stories. That's the only <laughs> taking advantage that happened. But yes. Yeah, he didn't touch me in any inappropriate <laughs> ways, but but accepted my soul. But then it was like, hey, Ryan, remember me? I, I cut this thing together. I need your advice. I need your I need your eyes on it. And then I feel like we've created this great friendship that i wish i had started i wish we could have started here and been like hey let's make a movie and then we'd like because we like get along so well and have a similar vision and uh yeah and I drive agree. i agree and i think we're gonna have i think it's the beginning of a beautiful working relationship too as well as friendship and but you know here's the question would it have been the same mm. like it, it did I need to be a subject before I could be somebody that you knew more personally? Like, maybe I think your objectivity was important. I, I, the reason I could never tell the story about nuclear gopher, no matter how badly I wanted to tell it was I'm too close to it. And the minute I would start peeling back anything, I would just get lost in a, you know, I would start with, Oh, I'm going to talk about the Lavone. And then I would start writing. And then like six hours later, I've written 10 pages and I haven't gotten past the part where me and Red are in the, you know, my mom's station wagon on the paper route (laughs) coming up with the name of the band. Right. Like (laughs) I, I struggle with perspective and 
to know what to leave out of the story, to know where to focus, to, to, to weave it together. Maybe it helped that you didn't really know me as well yet. I, I, yeah, I've still never met um, uh, Sean, the other director. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, it wasn't I, all me. It was Sean um, yeah. taking taking this raw interview of four hours or whatever it was. We're really good at four to five hour time lengths. Um, taking that raw content and then cutting down to like the the really core elements of the story and like making sure you had all the points that hit at the right moments. And I honestly, I never looked back because I think she did a great job. I haven't gone back to the original to see like what I missed. I'm sure there's you know a few nuggets in there. Oh, you could probably do a, you could do a, you could do a um, outtakes and yeah, um, it'll go on XJW coming out on the Patreon channel. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. That's that's, oh. that's the thing you want to yeah. talk about. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so the Patreon channel. We have a Patreon channel that's been going since the inception of. Well, once we got the crowdfunding, I was like, well, let's instead of just making a movie, let's make a movie and a TV series to go with it, because that's going to take the same amount of you know, effort. Yeah, why not? Um, so I just started doing both. And um, it was actually good for me because after filming the film and some of the interviews for the coming out series, I'm sidetracking, but we made both. Um, and I have been releasing content and this kind of stuff is out there as well as a bunch of interviews like this with you, but also with an author uh, who wrote uh, what's the book rising from the ashes of the Jehovah's witnesses by Denise wise, ISIS, all things. And also Camilla Didina, who's a Polish filmmaker for, who lives in Dublin, who's made a short film about her. Well, the, the woman's experience going through uh, being a Jehovah's witness and then like getting in trouble and going through the elders. What's the meeting called? The uh, judicial, the committee? judicial committee, yeah, judicial committee. Um, it's a great short film. It, she did an incredible job. I got to see the early cuts. I think I might have shared an early cut with you when we were in New York. Um, yeah, you I saw. You can saw neither that. confirm nor deny. But <laughs> if I did I see it, I think I thought it was great. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually did give. We gave feedback. We gave feedback collectively yeah. back, so she must know. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I talked to her about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so if you are interested in, if you're like, if as an audience member, if you're, if you want to come to this screening, or you can't and you want to support it, or you like the film and you want to support it, or you like the content on XW coming out, pa Patreon, XJW DOC, um, you can, for a $1 a month, you can like support this project as little as a dollar a month and you get a ton of extra stuff. There's like all of season two is still only for patrons. And there's still every month we're putting out one video. Um, there's a bunch out for this whole year. The year's coming to a close, so we're gonna have ten out. But there's just a bunch of cool stuff. I also release a bunch of my like archival, like videos I made when I was after I left the witnesses. I also moved to Vietnam and did a bunch of live music stuff. So I have a bunch of music videos I'm putting on there. Um, I put my documentary from Vietnam on there about the music scene. Like just some other. It's like it's my it's me, but it's also like ex shows witnesses and there's. A bunch more interviews I haven't even touched yet. Plus all the behind the scenes for the film is all on there. Nice. We'll, there'll be more coming. There's a lot more to, to show. And they're all really good. I've watched a bunch of this stuff. So actually I was gonna ask you if you had. Um, do yeah. you remember any particular one? Um, I, I I won't know the names of the individuals, but um I remember I think uh, I was really intrigued by one of the, well, A, I loved your, um, your Vietnam documentary, um, the, the rec room, that was really, rec room really anthology. Cool. That you. rec room anthology was very, very cool. I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of that because I love live music and I love indie bands and that had a lot of energy and it was just, it was super fun. Um, one of the XGW coming out ones that really stuck with me is somebody who was a dancer. Oh yeah, Miranda um, Noonan. Okay, yeah. I thought that one was really, really cool to see. It was a different form of creativity than I'm used to seeing. Um, it was a different story, a different kind of feeling mm -hmm. than um than what I mean. I everybody's story in all of this is pretty unique. So I don't know that there is a typical, but yeah. it certainly wasn't typical, right? By any stretch. So I thought that one was really good. Um, those are the first two that pop into my head. Miranda's interesting because in her story, just the highlights is that she was like locked, not locked, but like very much in, had an insular family that didn't really branch out. There was very little, very little room to like know other people outside the religion. 
um, and she had like a chat room that she found when she got like access to the internet and she met people on there. She ended up marrying a guy from this chat room. That was like her oh. exit. Yeah. Um, and then also when she was a little kid, she was, she had a blood, she was supposed to get a blood transfusion, but they couldn't. And then they, her parents left her to die. And then a doctor secretly gave him one that he could have lost his career over and it saved oh, her, wow. but she went blind in one eye from that. So she's been blind this whole, like this religion just like churns, man. It's just, Man. has all kinds of rough things but Oof. yeah she's very free now well that seems to be kind of like a theme with the uh, with uh those documentaries it's just people it kind of reminds me of like when a witness came to my door once and said and i said you know not interested and they said and i used to be a witness so you probably don't want to talk to me and they said um well do you think you found something better and i said absolutely you know, like it wasn't even a, I, it wasn't like even a thought in my head. Mm -hmm. And you get that a lot with your, with these, um, these shorts, the uh, people seem liberated. They seem kind of free. Actually, I don't know if um, this is worth mentioning, but there's a big X witness um, online concert event happening this oh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should talk about that. I'm really excited for that. Yeah. It's called Unchained and it is from a Facebook group hold on a second it is from a group called uh no i'm sorry not unchained uncaged and it is the uh worldwide um i'm trying to find the event page here it's by shane mechin out of new zealand he's the host yeah. but he's been yeah. putting together uh, yeah I, it's like leaving the jehovah's witnesses or no, it's not. Yeah, that's what I was trying to find the group. Yeah. The actual group. Oh, it's Life After Jehovah's Life Witnesses. After. That's right. So the yeah. Life After Jehovah's Witnesses Facebook group, which has about 2,000 members, and there's going to be this online streaming concert, and I'm going to perform at it um, around four. I was told around 4.50 Central Time on Saturday. Shane's a good dude. I didn't know. Like, I don't get a good read on Shane. But mm -hmm. I keep watching his channel. Like I keep going back for more because he keeps on bringing great people. He keeps the story moving. He asks great like questions. He drives deeper, and um, he keeps on he keeps on bringing in musicians, which I didn't expect that because that's not really how he he didn't like brand his show as like, which is more of what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm the guy who does the music thing with other ex witnesses or other ex religious people, and and he he brought on um, this wonderful guest the uh the wife of the singer for arcade fire is an ex-witness oh really and, yeah and so i connected with her right after and what's cool is um she's doing a a project right now an art installation project or an in, or a performance i can't remember i think it's an installation um with a guitarist i know from vietnam they're doing this thing together in montreal wow <laughs> yeah how and so cool I was like, that? I was like, oh, I got to send you. I saw you sent her yesterday. I sent her like four YouTube videos that I made like six years ago um, from a going away party for this uh, Ukrainian Australian woman. And she, her band had him as the guitarist and they're all wearing kimonos, but he, he got like, he got like the waist high kimono and he's like just wearing his underwear. He didn't know what his costume was going to be, but someone <laughs> brought him a kimono. <laughs> so he's like just in his underwear in a kimono on stage. Um, but he's an incredible artist and a really good guy. So oh, I was like, cool. oh, he'll love that I have these videos to send you. And she's like, yes, yeah, send them immediately. But anyway, he, she, Shane's getting good guests and it's been, it's been fun That's to very watch. Cool. I've not actually seen the show, so I don't know. Okay. Um, is, so um, I just was asked to play for the thing. So I'm playing for the thing. I'll like, have to watch that. Sounds, yeah. sounds really good. He for, also had a couple of guests on that were really great. Um, he, I can't remember the doctor's name, but it's a, a guy who's a doctor or has a doctorate degree but he runs recovering from religion. So I'm pretty sure he's a, some kind of doctor in the medical okay. field. And that was great. Cause I actually heard of them for years, but I never tapped in. And so once I watched that, I was like, okay, I'm hooked. I got to check it out. So I went and chatted with recovering from religion. I was on a show this morning or not a show, but like a call this morning with them. And they're oh, just cool. a great catch all recovering from religion.org. You can chat with them. You can call them for free. There's like hundreds of volunteers around the world and like many, many countries. They have therapy networks that are all vetted, secular only, non-religious, non-woo therapy. If you need that, if you want to try that, uh, what else? I want to really plug them because I feel like everything I've come across, there's like no clear path for someone who's going through leaving the religion. Mm -hmm. um, 
anyway, so recovering from religion this does and, bring up yeah. that might be a good resource to include in the post credits. We've talked about this about after some of the initial festival screenings, we've had some pretty emotional responses from people. And I think it would be it would be wise to include some good resources for people who are, you know, uh, need some additional steps and need to need some help. And that sounds like a really good one. Yeah. And they're not just starting out too. they've been around for 10 years. Nice. And that's exactly what I was thinking. That's where it's that's where we need to. Well, after people have gone through the story of the film and your story and like have thought about it, whatever their reaction is, at least have something they can do just yeah. to say, like, I'm thinking about this stuff. You can call these people as anonymous and like they really are there to help you. And they've all gone through something like that or they're a qualified person to help. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. excited to have some kind of actionable thing to do in the film. I wanted to show you something else. OK, yeah. yeah. What do you got? not? Is it, I'm just excited. So yeah, please show me. Um, about three or four months ago, I was uh, was on a road trip to the Michigan Upper Peninsula, hence my porcupine mountain hat here. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. I know what you're going to show me. And cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I discovered a guitar shop in Michigan. Um, it was, it is called, and I'm, I'm giving them a shout out guitar man's rough cut music in germ fast Michigan in the upper peninsula. It is not an easy place to get to. It is. If, if you say location, 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 this is like where, 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 um, <laughs> but so we drove like, uh, me and my buddy, Michael, we went up there this last, after I, I discovered Guitar Man's Rough Cut Music and its proprietor, Chip, um, discovered it by driving by it by accident, stopping in, walking in, and seeing a spectacular number of super cool guitars mm -hmm. and um, really rare stuff, high cool factor stuff, uh, just like Supros and Nationals and Univoxes and like mm -hmm. crazy giant custom amps, and just like cool gear you just do not see at guitar center. Right. Um, so I promised I would go back and I promised I would buy a guitar there. And this last weekend I did. So okay. hold on a second. Drum roll, please. Wait one second. I love that. You knew this is going to happen because you talked about it before your trip that you're going to go to this guitar shop and you might buy something super sexy for the show. Coming with the guitar. All right. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I now the proud Show. owner. This gorgeous 1967 Gibson J45 flat top acoustic. Wow. Bruce nice man. 67. Mahogany. It is from 1967 and sounds. Oh sounds amazing mm. i mean it's like let's see uh, there we go a little tiny nice. but i'm going to play this uh this is going to be at the show you want to give us a little preview you got a little you don't have to sing uh, it unless you want to, but oh, a little, sure, little instrumental. That. Hold on. You can get a little, little uh, impromptu. Can we turn the mic? As Let's you wish. see if I do this. He came my day before the party with watery eyes. And I asked myself, what were the auntie be? had some powerful excuse an errand to run or else I wouldn't be seeing him at all thank the bank thank the couches thank the back he hasn't retired yet thank the bank 
puck Damn the sunshine Damn myself for making such a mess of this Damn the puck Innocent though it is be in the place where I had to run, run, run. I hold by the hope the rift will close before he or I die. And I tell myself the odds of that happening are slim. Yes, I know I haven't got a weapon to use Tear down the wall without errands I wouldn't be seeing him at all Damn the bank Thank the couches Thank the back He has Retired yet Thank the bank For the privilege Of an errand To run, run, run <laughs> Very cool. I love that. Sounds yeah. just like on the record. Well, you know, that's good because yeah. I recorded the record. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us like a nice, like a really crisp sound with the guitar? Because it was like distant away from the microphone before yeah, we first gonna, strummed it. Yeah, it's a little tough, but if well, I... Let's have, see if I can I really pick up that Right wood. up here, you know. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, it's nice. What is it? What are the qualities of that guitar that you love? Well, here in my hands and as I'm playing it here, it's it sounds incredible. I mean, it it's so resonant. It's so rich and deep and warm. I have uh, other acoustic guitars, but this one and the action is very, very, very playable. Very nice. There's no bad frets. There's no bad anything, um, you know acoustics are funny because like with electrics you can be kind of like you know it looks cool you can just plug it in and you figure it out but an acoustic has to just be right mm -hmm. and you know mahogany and spruce resonate in certain ways and uh this guitar just it, it, it really i i wanted i looked at about 10 different guitars while i was there um this one just um I kept coming back to it like oh that's the one that's the one i gotta get oh, nice so pretty excited about it yeah. just sharing this is my i love it congratulations very pretty so yeah. pretty anyway <laughs> i have a lot of guitars but this one has got me very excited <laughs> that's how i get with lenses or a new camera body but lenses it's like ooh, i, need, I got a new i need to get a new lens and i'll get re-inspired the physical feel of the instrument does actually make a huge difference in terms of um, what you wind up doing with it. You create differently with different tools, yeah. you know, and I think that that that's a perfectly valid reason to have different tools. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Uh, how, how did practice go? Good, very good. We're we're. Uh, um, we're reinterpreting some of those songs, that one included, and um, uh, playing some I've never played before. So um, pretty excited. It's so really annoying. To, well, I mean, I usually play them when <laughs> I recorded them, or that would have been difficult. But it is uh, <laughs> it is certainly the case that um, one can write and record a song and then immediately forget how the hell. Uh, to actually play it again. Yeah. But I was fortunate, I was digging through some of the um, detritus around here and mm -hmm. I um, I found typed up sheets of chords and lyrics of a few of my songs from the last time I really played full band gig with my songs. And that was at like the terminal bar in like 2009 or something. So it's been a while. 
Yeah. Um, but I did find I, I at least have, uh, I, f- I was able to solve some chord problems I had because I couldn't remember how to play certain songs and I found the proof. Can you, uh, who, how does it go? How does, how, what's your band dynamic with this progress? Because obviously if it's Mason songs or like your band's making a new song, it's going to be different than yeah. this. Um, how is it, how are you showing them your songs and like, who's, who's asking for changes? Yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, we, um, so we started off by me, uh, uploading some of the recordings of some of the existing songs. And I said, okay, um, these are some of the songs I think I want to do. We do not need to slavishly follow the recordings. We can, we can change them if you guys like Oddly, I've been playing this band for three years. None of them have ever really listened to any of my solo work. So they were all like, okay, yeah, we'll go check it out. And so <laughs> it was kind of like, they're like, oh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I like this. We should play these. This is a good idea. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're not, you know, having to lower yourself to play my music. <laughs> so um, that was a few months ago. and. And, and really, honestly, it was like um, I, I sat down with those guys and, you know, Jesse and Mason and Eric already knew all this stuff, but I sat down with Jesse and Mason and I said, OK, so here's some songs and they listened to the songs and they really liked the songs. So so we kind of sat down, we took an initial four or five of them and we kind of just said, OK, we're going to start working on these. And um, of the like four we did tonight. Um, three of them have experienced some sort of major renovation in the process. Mm. So like, you know, one um, is very different uh, because it had the bones and the structure of being a good rock song, but it was an acoustic song. So now it's a rock song. Um, And uh, that's super fun. That song is really just hitting for our band. I think it might actually, there's a chance it stays in our repertoire even going forward after this show. What about, can you just tell us what they are? Or you like want to keep it on the DL for some reason? I, it's not so much a DL thing. I mean, just, I don't think anybody's going to know what these songs are, but we are playing, um, mm. we, we've got a really cool rock version of I Hate July. Um, we've, we've got um, a pretty straight, but really nice high energy version of uh, James and Donna Dancing um, from Songs of Bo Readout. We have a, uh, we're, we're working up a version of like one of the very first Lavone songs ever, My Adventure Flowerland. Oh, amazing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, That song be... is so quirky and like doesn't fit at all in the repertoire of any of the bands in Nuclear <laughs> Gopher. And it's in the film. And I was, when I found it as like a secret song that came on a later <laughs> album, I was like, yes. Okay, great. This is so weird and like celebratory and like circus. Like I really uh... was happy. I'm really glad to get that response because yeah. yeah, we're gonna uh we're planning to play that. And then we're um we're playing uh some of my stuff that I'm kind of the album I'm kind of taking from right now is from um uh A Man Could Get Tired and Other Songs, which I put right. out in 2013. So I hate July's on there. We're playing uh I sleep with my hands and fists. It's a good track. We're, we're playing fun. um and, and we're playing um oh and we're playing the one I just played, Aaron. Yeah, that's a good song. Uh, Aaron's, but yeah, we're I doing Aaron's. it. We're doing it more. Um, we're doing it electric, uh, little a little more, uh, a little more grit to it. Not not quite as um, sort of straight up clean as the recording of the original Trumpet Marine album. Um, I think we're probably gonna dig out a couple really old ones. Um, I'm expecting us to next week start working on a few more we're probably going to be getting into playing um war is over uh which war is, is over is in the film yeah it's a great song it sort of like washes over you yeah that one said that a lot about a lot of your music when i gave you notes <laughs> this one washes over you in a beautiful uh, way i'm into the washing music yeah. um <laughs> Uh, but there's another one um, called Digital Plastic Moon Beings that you've probably not heard. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a Lavone track from the 80s. 
uh, the original recording is like a lot of Moog synthesizers and super lo-fi. It's very lo-fi. It sounds like crap. But I know in my head what it's supposed to sound like, and I've played it on. I've I've worked up a live rendition of it in the past, and um, so I think we're gonna do that. It's very flaming, flaming lipsy, and it's got a lot of whoop 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 whoop, whoop and crazy synthesizers and shit. <laughs> cool. um, and then uh, uh, we're also looking at um, uh, a song called Molotovs that is on kind of i that's been on like three or four of my uh different favorite things i've ever done because it's one of those, those songs that i always just want to throw in because i've liked that song for so long but the thing about that song is that it was actually a song i wrote about my struggle with faith when i was a witness mm-hmm. and it's written in heavy code to the point where every lyric is very metaphorical about something very specific that i meant and and i was like nervous when i recorded this song because i was afraid people were going to figure out what my code was all about oh wow so the um, that's it's like deep big brother fears right there yeah exactly like <laughs> i'm writing some song but like the lyrics are like somebody handed me a check and a brass watch with a chain and i stood looking at them sipping molotov cocktails in the rain and 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 it's like the whole thing is about being handed the uh being handed the keys to a successful uh f- forever life the check and a brass watch with a chain is like the reward you get after um being uh a life life of work and now you retire and now you get to enjoy right. your retirement and what I'm, what I'm sort of, they're, they're standing in for the symbol of being handed the keys to the paradise earth. And, um, and then stood looking at him sipping Molotov cocktails in the rain is uh, fairly self-explanatory. Like I'm being self-destructive because I'm secretly dating this girl. Mm. And uh, so the lyrics are all, um, the song is from like high school. So uh, I think we're going to p- pull that one out. And then um and then probably a few more. I don't know, but the, cool. right now that's that's some of the preview um, of some stuff. There's going to be some obscure old Levone stuff that is not available for anybody to listen to, and there's going to be some of my stuff from my Bandcamp stuff. We're going to send K Piss another record so I can pull <laughs> some off of. <laughs> I'm actually working on a new album, so oh, wow. um, I'm excited to. Uh, you know, now that I think somebody might listen to it, it seems worth recording shit. I've been writing music this whole time. I just don't bother to record it anymore, but that's going to change. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Actually, so that's something we didn't get into too much. You mentioned it earlier, but um, what you want to do with Nuclear Gopher, if you want to give yeah. a little spiel. <laughs> <laughs> How much time we got? Um, all right, here's my pitch. Nuclear Gopher happened to be set up for and operated by Jehovah's Witnesses. And that was because that was the culture we were in. But that was actually not what Nuclear Gopher was about. If you had asked me at the time, I would have never mentioned religion. I would have mentioned we were about a DIY aesthetic. We were about learning how to work with whatever materials were available in terms of equipment or gear or crayons or whatever the hell you had in order to don't give yourself excuses not to create. And for me, the, the do-it-yourself, uh, create at all costs, uh, don't look for permission, don't wait till you have the perfect gear or the perfect thing even though that gibson's pretty great um (laughs) that's what it was always about was um being able to have no excuses and if that meant you made weird stuff that nobody cared about but you that was great that was perfect that was what it was for i look at the the world we have today of media and music and and we have uh social networks and we have streaming services and we have all sorts of new technologies that are fantastic, right? They, they do allow people to reach huge audience. They allow um, people to find out about each other, but they're dehumanizing in a way because everything that we're doing is being intermediated by these kind of faceless mega corporation, big tech companies. And 
you know, as cool as it is to click on somebody's Spotify playlist and listen to their music, it's not as cool as going back to a merch table at a show and buying a handmade CDR from them, mm -hmm. right? One of those things is ephemeral and and unlimited, and the other one is is uh, is is fixed to meat space and is very <laughs> um, is very personal and is also has the advantage of, of scarcity like there's not an unlimited amount of those things right and so to me i want people who i want nuclear gopher to be something that produces music and art in the spirit that it always has and that spirit is underground diy you're in you, you know not not big production and not mainstream and not and what's still using all of the modern technology so in my perfect world an album comes out let's say i, I finish my next album i'm probably going to want to do like a very limited production run of it and if you have it you have it if you don't you don't and then it'll be on streaming too but the cool part will be the you know the hand signed 500 copies or whatever mm -hmm. um but i also want to support that for other people i want to there are artists that i love who um put out music and uh, locally and not not just locally um but people i know and people who do great work and um if i like their work um i want to back it you know and if it don't like their work i may still want to back it um but i like the idea of creating a community for that and having people be more focused on having a uh, being part of a community and doing something um creative for themselves than whether or not they're monetizing their um influence or whatever like that doesn't help your soul that doesn't help you get through a hard day like you get through that by by creating and feeling good about what you create. So that's the future of nuclear gopher. That's what we're going to do. We're going to, however, in whatever ways seem to make sense, I'm going to do my best to support, uh, support the indie DIY punk rock attitude of just get shit done and do it because you love it. Share it with the people who love it. And, you know, that's all you need to do. Yeah. It's not that, that so that's what nuclear gopher is going to be so there the website will be coming back i have a whole new site designed um it's going to be interesting it's not going to be what you think it is whatever you do think it is and i'm not going to tell you till you get to see it um that's directed at you scott um <laughs> and uh uh this movie is putting us in a pretty interesting position to be able to do this so i'm pretty cool to see what you know, what I'm really, really interested to see is what community forms out of this. Mm, yeah, I'm I really want to see that, about that too. I want to see that community form, and I've already seen some bits of it. You know, when we've mm -hmm. been out and met some people who have seen this movie. So, yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, I love that. There's not. It's not just like a movie about the past, as you said before in our previous conversations. It's not just a nostalgic thing. It is nostalgic. It's amazingly nostalgic. Is why I want part of the reason why I knew there was a story and why I wanted to make it. But the fact that you're like, actually, no, like it's, it wasn't. We weren't just doing this as witnesses. We were doing it, and I'm including myself because I made music as well, mm -hmm. uh, in the exterior of Nuclear Gopher, but contemporary too. Like, it has a future, and it doesn't have to be related to this religion. In fact, that's like the least important part of this whole thing. It's like it's about the love of creation of art and music. Yeah. And yeah. supporting other artists, no matter what your background is. What Nuclear Gopher in the future is not going to be is as important as what it will be. It's not just going to be the same thing, but for X witnesses, right? right? Yeah. It's just, it's going to be for art and creativity, and it won't, it doesn't matter what your religious affiliation or lack thereof is. Yeah. <laughs> it's more about, it's more about, um, uh art for art's sake so it's very exciting yeah. um yeah so um that's what's going on with nuclear gopher cool i was just poking around for 
for Sound Unseen, we want to make some merch, right? We talked about, you and I have talked about it, but for everyone else, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about making at least, a, at least like a downloadable album or soundtrack. That's easy. We can do that. There's already stuff out there on Bandcamp from us. Um, but I was thinking like a t-shirt, like a concert or film festival t-shirt kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, guitar picks as swag. And just looking at that stuff and like doing the branding because we've built branding for the movie. And it's, I mean, you built branding for Nuclear Gopher back in the day. So it's like a combo of, if you look at, I have the poster. It's Ryan <laughs> standing on a guitar neck. That's Ryan's face on a Jehovah's Witness body. <laughs> the disembodied Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> With the Nuclear the Gopher logo behind it, where I guess he's <laughs> he is the gopher in this case. I uh, In a I'm psychedelic head, world. Yeah, I'm the head gopher. <laughs> um but it's fun to put that merch on that, that those kind of images on merch and be like oh this is actually like pretty sick and it's just fun to think that like it's not just for this one day in november 12th where this is going to be useful it's like no there's like a there's a whole brand that and not just a brand it's like there's a whole community that you can join and you can record your music you can do some art you can make something you could help let ryan help support you if you're an artist kind of thing it's going to be um really interesting i hope um and yeah the nuclear gopher brand such as it is um it couldn't be better for this exact thing in my opinion and of course i'm highly biased because i came up with it but um long time ago just in case you don't know the the reason it's called nuclear gopher is because um I had recorded a song and it didn't have a title and I was cleaning my bedroom and I found a piece of paper on the floor and on the piece of paper, I had written a phrase and I think it was in my sleep because I don't remember writing it down, but it said the gay laughter of nuclear gophers. And I named the, uh, I named the label nuclear gopher. And the only reason I named anything anything was we had just bought our first four track and we were like, oh, well, we got to name our studio now. So we named it the Nuclear Gopher Original Electric Stereophonic Recording Studio. <laughs> I love that. And <laughs> so long. We, we later shortened it to the Nuclear Gopher Cheese Factory and then shortened it again to Nuclear Gopher Productions. Um, but the original Nuclear Gopher Stereophonic Recording Studio thing um, after a little while, I decided I needed a tagline. I thought about it for two seconds and I was like, underground and radiating. And it's so good. It almost seems like I thought about it, but I didn't. It like, <laughs> <laughs> it just came to you as a muse. I do feel very much as if I was fortunate enough to stumble into this entire. Uh, this entire concept floating around in the universe, just waiting to hit somebody in the head. Cause I don't remember coming up with nuclear gopher and I don't remember. And I, I immediately knew our slogan was underground irradiating and I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to like focus group check it or anything. And it's great. <laughs> it, and it fits. It fits that was mission. a very Arthur Dent way to describe it. <laughs> I was walking around aimlessly and I, this fling was floating in the universe and I knocked my head into it. <laughs> I, I believe <laughs> Uh, I have a hitchhiker's guide right there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> there were 42 songs in, in the soundtrack for this movie. Did you do that on purpose? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> bless you, sir. Big fan. That's it. You know, the first book, uh, this is still as a teenager, as a witness, but I, I read that all six books in that trilogy, which is always fun to say. Yeah. Um, and that all six books made me, I'd sit, I'm sitting alone doing the lo least social thing possible reading a book like you did before the internet. And I would find myself just like setting the book down and laughing. <laughs> like, I'm still laughing. How can a book do that? Just words on, words on paper. Like nothing else does this to me. Uh, Douglas Adams is a huge influence on me. So I'm, I didn't know this about you, but I'm not surprised. But I, yeah. uh, I read the first, I think I actually read So Long and Thanks for All the Fish first. I was in like sixth grade. And I was just, I had no idea what was happening, but I was in love. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I actually have on the Apple II sitting here, I've got the Hitchhiker's Guide text adventure game on oh, floppy cool. disk. Nice. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> All text, no graphics. Yep. I missed, it's I hilarious. used to play those games as a kid. It's hilarious. 
So, all right. I think we should wrap. I think yeah, we I have think so. got a lot of good content here. Oh, it's um, solid. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. coming on, Ryan. Absolutely. We're going to do this again in the future. And mm-hmm. maybe next time we'll, um, I don't know, we could, we could consider having other guests. Yeah, actually. Okay. So anyone listening and for you, Ryan, I talked to Wesley David of Wesley David Music. If you want to check him out on Instagram, okay. he's super good dude. He does like piano bar stuff. So lots of the 90s covers and he has his own album he just came out with called Never Bait, Never Late Than Better. It's a twist on the expression. Better okay. Than never. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's all about uh, his experience leaving the witnesses, even though he left at 19 and now he's in his 30s. Um, it's like, you know, it's been over 15 years or something that he spent like thinking about this now he wants to like he put a record out during the pandemic and he went to music university he's just like a super cool dude he lives right here in long beach and we met up and uh i i also had him on xgw coming out as an interview like this um super good dude so he said next not next Thursday, but the thursday after so i guess second okay. thursday of october wait a second so can i share a screen here uh yeah you should be able to share look at that <laughs> yes yeah. yes that Thank is you, a Wes. phenomenal <laughs> website. amazing Wesley music. oh Wes, it's just so I 90s am, it's beautiful i am loving your website i love this a lot <laughs> this is this is great shit he has a hell of a sense of humor he really oh, does this you should is, check out his instagram feed Oh, this is fantastic. Join oh. the anti-influencer movements. I hate <laughs> ads. I hate big data. I hate social media. I like this guy. Let's talk to this guy. This yeah. Is, this oh, is man. excellent. I just, I had to show. This is, <laughs> this is a website after my own heart. Oh, wait, scroll up. He's riding on a, on a mug you can buy. It looks like if you scroll up, he's riding like a rainbow creature or something. Oh, uh, where was that? Keep going where down. Oh, uh, wait. Yo, here we go. He has merch. Oh, no, he's he's this is... doing a big wide armed stance with his guitar and like a rainbow <laughs> background. I misread what that was. I thought he was on a like on a horse, <laughs> which would also be cool. You should make a horse riding Wes rainbow psychedelic mug. <laughs> wow, for me. this is this is really great. This is really, really good stuff. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to share the joy that of this website. So should we expect something like this, Ryan, for Nuclear Gopher? Nice um, 90s aesthetic. Do you have something in mind? Definitely going to find something that doesn't look like an, the website you 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 see every day. It's yeah. not going to be yet another typical website. Oh, man. After you pointed it out, I was like, oh, my God, my blinders have been on for years. Everyone, <laughs> everyone has the same website. It's so boring. And it's like the aesthetics are so just uninspiring and blah. Well, there's a good reason for it, and we could go way down the rabbit hole of this because there's, but it functionally is that it is no longer design. It's just right. implementing a particular um, accessible um, box to put your design thing in, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to share one more time just because this is the greatest thing in the world. This is the website I think is probably the only one any of us ever need in today's modern (laughs) world. This is, it's every bootstrap website ever. This button (laughs) makes the page scroll and (laughs) Google Google that that shit. shit. So fucking creative. (laughs) And if we Google it, you can get to let me Google that for you, which will get you to your bootstrap template search. Um, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, this is great. Like website They're, comedy this is beautiful. All the same site ever, and for icons, bullshit. <laughs> all me. Um, yeah, this, <laughs> this is this is one of my favorite sites on the internet. Right up there with Zombo.com. Oh, Zombo, Zombo.com. New Zombo.com. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, so Wesley David, uh, let's see if we can't get him to come chat with us about the shit. He looks yeah. like his heart's in the right place on this. I love it. Definitely. Yeah, he's a good guy. And then um, there's a few other artists I'd like to work with, but I guess I shouldn't spoil a show that might not exist just yet. <laughs> but I've been meeting XCW artists, I guess I can say that, um, a lot lately, especially the more news that comes out of the film. So 
Um, one, actually, I think I don't know if I told you, but her music video played just before Witness Underground in Winchester, Virginia at the Genre Blast Film Festival. And then she played her music video played again in L.A. at this festival as that. And she found out about the film and was like, hey, can I meet you? So she's this like amazing uh, installation performance artist. She makes all of her own music. And it's like it's like if Madonna was from hell or like doom and dark side. It's so 80s and dancey and synth heavy and like okay. amazing. And then it's like the darkest shit about cannibalism. But she's like wow. super sexy and dances around and does all sorts of weird, bizarre shit in a bubble. Like me. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You two should have a co-performance together. <laughs> <laughs> her name's Geneva Jacuzzi. You should check her stuff out. I'm super stoked about her music. All right. And then uh the Bloody Tuesdays are also another band that are popping up here. Those are I'm just fans of these bands. So hopefully they can come on someday. Well, let's see what we can do, man. Yeah. Um, because we gotta we're gonna do this again. I can, um, yeah, just send me any links to anything that you want me to check out. I'll check it out. Okay, sounds good. All right, cool. All right well, let's, let's wrap it up then. Uh, thanks for everybody for listening. Uh, I'll talk to you next week, Ryan. Yeah, talk to you next week. Have a good one, Scott. <laughs>